Optic Gaming was one of the most beloved teams in esports history. After a year of pain, there it is! Optic Gaming back on top! They were a pillar of the Call of Duty community, led by one of the most well-respected figures in the industry, and they had some of the most devoted fans in the world. But one day, Optic suddenly fell apart. He's like, they're gonna find a home for the Call of Duty players within the next two weeks. And I'm like, I, I seriously, my, my, my heart dropped. And I was like, I cannot believe that they're not even gonna give me a chance. 2018 was supposed to be the year that Optic took things to the next level. Instead, it marked the beginning of the end for one of esports' greatest organizations. I remember so, walking in, yeah. seeing the Allegiance flag, and I pointed at it, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Why is there another team's flag in my offices? Today, Optic Gaming Los Angeles is a team in the Call of Duty World League, but it's Optic in name alone. With new management and players, Optic LA is a shallow husk of its former self, a team that just a few years ago was considered an industry titan and could bring out fans in droves. An org that went from sniping montages on YouTube to being named the best esports team of the year. An org once led by Hector Rodriguez, better known as Hex. <laughs> Yo, he just got perfect. <laughs> if you don't know who Hex is, the dude is the personification of hard work. Despite having a financially difficult childhood, Hex grinded his way to a life of luxury in the early 2000s by climbing the ranks of the insurance industry. I said, all right, I'm, I'm gonna work with money. I'm gonna work in a bank. So I worked at, at a bank as a teller, and then from there, I, I was like an assistant personal banker. From there, I went to work at a, at a call center for Harris. Remember Harris Bank? Mm -hmm. I think it's BMO now? Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. All right, so Harris, and then from there, I went into the mortgage industry from 2003 to 2000, to whenever it blew up, the, the mortgage industry, because of subprime lending. Yeah, it lending. was super hot at that time. Right. But Hex's lifestyle took a pretty big hit after the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, I dropped from making 130 to 150, you know, depending on bonuses on, on how uh -huh. good I was, to 45 a year. And I had to give back, I had to, I couldn't afford my, uh, at the time I had a navigator and my, and my girl, whose wife now had to give back her Mercedes. But amidst all this hardship, Hex unknowingly took a step into an industry that would change his life. Again, for me, it was it was nothing to do with business. It, it had everything to do with like creating cool videos that had to do with Call of Duty. And it was a montage called um, Take No Prisoners or something like that. It was a Call of Duty 4 uh, montage. And that was it. From there, Hex found his way to Optic Gaming. So you didn't found Optic. Did Jay found it? I don't know my history. Uh, I think it was like three people. Okay. Um, How did you lead it? How did uh, it? Everybody left and it okay. was just me. So at that time I'm like, all right, I'm gonna recruit my brother. I'm gonna recruit that. And then my brother's like, we should make videos on YouTube the way that, you know, Grizz is making. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we should. We're good with the sniper, yeah. So we're like, we, the whole sniper team became a thing just by happenstance that we mm -hmm. just all liked the sniper rifle. And while Optic may have started out as a sniping clan, they quickly expanded into esports, starting a team that featured future superstars. Gujar's gotta find Clayster, Clayster's gonna look, and he gets the kill, and Optic Gaming wins it! Optic Gaming, your X Games gold medal champion. What a performance here from Optic! But Optic wasn't just killing it in terms of tournament results. See, Hex knew that to be a truly great team, you needed more than just wins. You needed the fans to truly connect with the players and feel like they were part of something bigger than just themselves. You needed the green wall. You know, because of that sort of culture that we created, we also wanted to give something to, to, the, to the fans, something that they could be a part of. I, 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 again, not to relate to gang or anything, but a group, a family that they could be a part of that, that directly coincides and is, is, is a direct sort of, you know, part of the business, part of the group, part of the family, and, and that's what the green wall was. So while Optic dazzled fans with their in-game skills on stage, they also made them laugh with their content. And Hex was a huge part of that too. 
there were houses before in esports, but it was purely competition. And I think that you had a vision for Optic Gaming and, and for that house specifically that I think a lot of us that were a part of the team saw because we all believed in it enough to actually move in. I was already streaming on, on, on Justin TV before that, and then it switched over to Twitch. You know, I had a couple hundred viewers, but when we finally made it to the Optic Gaming team house, Russell Drive, 6050, that's when everything exploded. And you were the driving force behind that. But managing this kind of team was expensive, especially back then in the early days of esports when sponsorships weren't as lucrative as they are today. So Hex had to make some sacrifices. You know, those countless years where Jude and I were just fucking stressed on where I was. Yeah, you're, you're running at a loss because you believe in what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and still, you know, I, I, would, I would pay myself like the, the, the very least that I could to do that and all the sponsorship money would go into you know salaries and expansion salaries and expansion but those sacrifices paid off the optic brand grew expanding into more and more games spray comes through Royce gets a kill and ladies and gentlemen optic gaming the winners of e-league season two this Three, one's over two one there you have it ladies and gentlemen Optic Gaming are your 2017 Halo World Champions. They may give it one last go, they won't. They'll they tap won't. out. GG is called Optic Gaming take the series 2-0 and we'll be moving forward. But as the esports industry continued to grow, certain people started to take notice. People with very deep pockets. Suddenly, whole sorts of esports teams were flush with venture capital cash. Orgs like Immortals were literally built on investment money. Sure, Optic were still a successful team, but all the success in the world can't compete with millionaires who are willing to drop fat stacks on top players, expensive facilities, and high-end content. People forget of how much of a low point it was at. We yeah. Could, and, and we needed something. We needed, because everybody else was getting these huge investments, and they were getting these big teams, these winning teams, and we were kind of just yeah. on the downfall on all fronts. While he held out as long as he could, Hex knew that if he wanted to compete in this new esports landscape, he needed more money. So in 2017, he went out looking for investors. Enter Infinite Esports. At first, Infinite looked like an incredible opportunity for Hex. The investors were the real deal. One was even the co-owner of the Texas Rangers. The reason that I chose to step back was to create content and have fun. Right. Without the worry of, of spreadsheets and without the worry of any of that bullshit. But as soon as Hex got back from his vacation, he knew something was wrong. I remember so, walking in, yeah. seeing the Allegiance flag, and I pointed at him, what the fuck is that? Why is there another team's flag in my offices? Right. Why? Right. Right, because up until the point, they hadn't told me that they were going to pick up all these other teams for whatever fucking reason. Right. Infinite tried to expand Optic fast. And I'm not just talking about the multi-million dollar slots they bought in both the LCS and the Overwatch League. Infinite bought up entire esports teams, Obey and Allegiance, and hired a huge staff for their Texas office. And immediately I'm just like, oh, we don't need this many people. And I didn't see it like, we don't need these. I saw it as like, oh my God, these right. people are, are setting themselves up for something bad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And what happened? You know, eventually they- a purge happened. Yeah, right. a purge happened. And that is unfair and that is wrong yeah. for people to lose their jobs. Right. And during this obsessive period of expansion, Optic's culture was lost. Traditions were being thrown away and the higher ups didn't seem to care. There was a jersey on the fucking board. Right. Okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. What is, is that? Is that, what is that? Is that League of Legends? Because I understood that League of Legends was going to have to get their own shit. Right. They're like, no, no, this is, this is going to be the new thing. This is going to be the 2018. So I'm like, we dropped the 2018 said November of 2017, like we have for the past 10 years. That you're not, you're not throwing that. Right. And he's like, yeah, it's just that we're, we're going to own the rights to this one because we don't own the rights to the other one where, you know, this other merch company owns it. And I'm like, no, I own everything. Right. We're going to keep this jersey for the remainder of the year. And that's that. And then he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm being told other otherwise. And I'm like, but I'm yeah, I'm the boss. Right. OK. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who's above you on, on, on a chart. You know what I'm saying? Chart. I built this shit. Infinite's aggressive expansion was burning tons of money, and apparently, it was unsustainable. You have to try to 
to mess up optics. You gotta try really hard. No, but they didn't. They didn't, it was just, it came natural to them. All of a sudden, Optic had to let go of both teams and staff. Infinite even wanted to get rid of the org's COD team. And that's that, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. We're not dropping that team. If you drop the team, I'm leaving too. And if I leave, everybody else is gonna leave too. Finally, after spending a lot of 2018 continuously downsizing, Infinite threw up their hands and said, screw it. They started looking for a buyer for Optic in early 2019, and Hex? was first in a line to try to buy his baby back. Seven months ago, I approached the ownership group uh, and I said, let me get Optic back. I wasn't asking for a discount. I was, I was trying to make them some money. So they, you know, whatever, we, we gave it a good run. But Hex had stiff competition. Other esports orgs wanted to buy the Optic brand, including Immortals who were backed by some serious investors. I would assume Texas Esports would wish to sell to Immortals Gaming Club because of the of the track record of those investors versus if uh, selling back to Hacker, which is just a dude, right? right? Their option is they could sell back to a dude or they could sell to IGC and have the cloud of selling it and exiting to a company, which VCs care a lot about, uh, that has like AEG and like Lionsgate behind them. They're obviously gonna sell with IGC even if Hector offers more. And in June, 2019, Immortals won the Optic sweepstakes, beating out Hex. So Hex had a choice. On one hand, he could stick with Immortals. He'd basically be in the same position he was with Infinite. Sure, he'd be around, he'd be the face, but he wouldn't have control. The suits would still make all the calls. Or he could do something different. Hex joined NRG as their new co-CEO, and he pretty much took the entire green wall with him because those fans were not going to stand behind the new Optic. It's their Optic now. Make some noise for Optic LA! These days, Hex is living his best life, making content and building teams, including NRG's COD team, the Chicago Huntsman. 15 seconds on the clock. Mathematically, it is done. Optic is done. Huntsman take a convincing 3-0 and show who's on top. The tragedy of Optic is a cautionary tale, a warning about how investors can destroy a team that was once considered an industry giant, how big money sometimes can't understand a team built by and for the fans. But Hex survived all that. He refused to tap out. And while the Optic he built might be dead, he's doing his best to keep the green wall alive forever. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.